Don't worry about me. I died serving something greater than myself. That's the way I wanted to die. You did everything you could to make me a better person, but it didn't always work. I was way too much, like you, for it to work. Make sure my friends know I died how I wanted. I have no regrets and no unfinished business. I died confident with how I lived my life. Love, Joshua. A knock on my door at 11.30 p.m. on July 31st, 2006, changed my life and that of my family forever. Two military chaplains and a sergeant informed myself and my wife that my only son, Joshua Andrew Ford, age 20, was killed by an improvised explosive device while on a convoy with the 189th Transportation Company in Iraq. Another soldier, Ben Marksmeyer, was severely injured and lost his right leg in the same explosion. The news of Josh's death, the questions we had that the chaplains could not answer, numbs one very quickly. The thoughts of Josh's birth, the thoughts of a little blonde-haired boy having stand in the corner for being naughty, a teenage boy who convinces his dad to allow him to use his newly purchased inline skates without protective equipment resulted in a broken wrist. The average student in his dad's American government class refusing to take notes, which a lot of kids do, but passed all of the tests. The very scared boy who wrecked his dad's car and the more scared father who thought he could have lost his son. The very proud young man and very, very proud father in attendance graduating from his advanced individual training at Fort Leonard Wood. The deployment ceremony held for the 189th in Wayne. The hugs and the tears of goodbye flash very quickly through your mind. The thoughts are, what do we do now? When will Josh be brought home? Did he suffer? Was he alone at the time of his death? Was anyone else injured or killed? How will I tell his sisters that their brother will not be coming home? How will his grandmother and other family members react to the news? How do we deal with the press? Where will we bury Josh? How will I handle the loss of one of my children, which is not the normal order of life? The parent is supposed to die first. All of these questions make you wonder how will we get through the next few days, months, and yes, even years. My wife Linda and I spent the rest of the night and part of the next morning traveling the highways to inform my three daughters, Jessica, Aaron, and Sean, and other family members of our loss. When we arrived home after spending about nine hours on the road, many of our friends, relatives, Brad Whelan, the National Guard recruiter who signed Josh up to serve our great nation, and many others were there to help us deal with everything we faced over the next 10 days. Phone calls from our elected officials were received telling us how proud we were, they were of Josh and his ultimate sacrifice, and asking us what they could do for us. Can you ask them to turn the clock back? and prevent Josh's death. Meeting with my CAO, Casualty Assistance Officer, Susan Traub, helped to answer many of our questions. One learns very quickly how the military handles the loss of one of their own. Susan spent most of the next 10 days with us. Susan helped me to prepare to meet the press, answer their questions, escort Josh home from the airport, and gave us the moral support we needed to make it through this very difficult time. We buried Josh on August 10th, 2006, with full military honors. Josh was promoted to the rank of sergeant and awarded the Bronze Star and the Purple Heart and many other medals for his service. The population of Pinder probably doubled that day with the streets lined to honor Josh as we drove to the cemetery. More than 170 Patriot Guard riders attended the funeral to shield us by lining the sidewalk from the school where we gathered as a family to the church, holding American flags to shield another fallen hero from the protesters, or uglies as I like to call them, that are part of a supposed church in Kansas. My family is now a member of a group 
that no one wants to join. The Gold Star families. Those families who have lost a family member in combat or while serving on active duty. Today, 11 Nebraska families of National Guard members belong to this group, along with 49 other Nebraskans who served in other branches of the United States military. My son Josh was an average kid until he was a junior in high school. He was a couch potato who loved to play video games, watch movies, draw, and spend that time with his friends, one of which was in the convoy at the time of his death. One day in February of his junior year, he asked to speak to the National Guard recruiter 